Hi all, let's have a look at the new kid on the block for TSEC, or rather a new version of Stockfish, Stockfish NN, Neural Network version. So this is Stockfish against Alistein in the Premium Division. This is round 10. We see the Reti opening, so after Richard Reti, one of the leading hypermodernists of his time. The hypermodernists created useful exceptions to established theory. So for example, the occupation of the center, maybe you could just influence the center with a move like Knight F3. So the Reti opening after Richard Reti. We have a very, a very aggressive response from Annie Steen, the Dutch defense. So we have now G3, Knight F6, Bishop G2, D4, Bishop G, sorry, G6, D4, Bishop G7. We're in the opening book still. And we have a queenside fianchetto as well. And after c4, knight a6, we reach the end of the book given to both of them. So a very interesting position. It's a Dutch defense Leningrad transposition here. And I have played the Dutch Leningrad once or twice. It's a very exciting opening. We have rook e1 and now b6, knight bd2 and bishop e7. So black's clamping down on the e4 square. Sometimes it's desirable for white to play for e4, but white's far away from that at the moment. a3, e6, b4, that does restrict the knight on a6, queen e7. We have here queen b3 and now c5. b5, knight c7, a4. So white's gaining a bit of space on the queen side, rook a b8, and now queen a3. One question I thought here, could white get access to the e5 square? You know, what about d takes? But maybe black just plays b takes, keeps guard of the e5 square, and actually plays e5. And this should be okay, it seems, after knight e6, the knight uh, goes there, and then queen c7 hitting the a pawn. It seems as though black should be about equal there. So there doesn't seem to be a point to playing d takes. So anyway, queen a3 was played. We have bishop a8, e3, a6, rook a c1. Is there a point to take on a6? I'm not sure there is. This wasn't played. If we look at this for a moment, it seems as though black should be doing okay uh, and maybe could play aggressively like this. White might have a small edge technically, but it doesn't seem that inspiring in the white position here. It seems as though black's rock solid in general. Uh, so here, okay, so rook a c1 for the moment. We have rook f e8, bishop c3, and now a takes. c takes, this gives white the c4 square. Knight c d5, and it does weaken d5, so black's pouncing in on that. d takes, and now b takes. If knight takes c3, white can insert c takes d6 without penalty here, attacking the queen. There's no knight e2. We'll just take that. That should be nice for white. Black doesn't want to do that for sure. For example, this is a disaster continuation for black. Black's uh, material down there. Uh, so let's have a look though at what happened. So D takes, we have B takes. There is now two connected pass pawns in theory on the queen side. The bishop retracts back E5. And now this starts to remind me of a classic encounter between Tigran Petrosian and Boris Spassky. Spassky flung all his pawns at Petrosian and later Petrosian did an exchange sacrifice and kind of the whole thing backfired on Spassky. It was Spassky's king which was weaker. Right now with these pawns like imminent coming down you'd think, especially with the queen over here, is this a bit suspect for white's king safety? We have rook ed1, e4, knight being pushed back. It seems a bit passive, doesn't it? Knight b4, it looks as though black's got everything that they would dream of in principle. Bishop f1, another bishop, uh, another piece rather, going to the first rank. Doesn't this look like a bit passive, saying come and get me? It does remind me of Tigran, this, this classic Tigran Petrosian game right now. Uh, we do have white supporting the b5 pawn, so the a5 push, these pawns look a bit more dangerous in terms of their past pawn potential if they're together. We have though g5, so black really is going for it here. Can black rip apart white's king or not? 
A dramatic scene is being set. The two connected past pawns, a5 now over here, versus this imminent, seemingly very aggressive attack, f4. Can white's play really be justified with a knight on e1 here? We have knight c4 now. This does hit the d6 pawn. It also, because of the pawn on a5, it's not just about the two pawns. The pawn on a5 supports the b6 square. So the knight's hitting d6, but it also can step into b6. Black plays d5 here. If rook just simply protects there, then this sequence, knight b6, f takes, queen takes, seems sufficient for white to be able to defend. For example, like this, pinning across the diagonal of death. And if e3, it seems as though this looks remarkably close to white being knocked out, but not quite enough after bishop takes this variation is not quite enough. It seems as though there's not much for black to do here. There's a check, but after that, not too much. So white actually stands better there in that variation. Very razor sharp looking. So that was on rook bd8. If rook takes b5, then just knight takes d6, forks the two rooks, and bishop c4 check. And in fact, this is even stronger than taking on e8. If white takes out the dark square bishop, queen a1 is super nifty. This is a really devastating refutation. And it's just crushing, absolutely crushing here. You can see black's king is brought out, devastating. And if f3 instead, then knight takes and then knight f5 again, taking out the dark square bishop is a disaster if white's left with this bishop on that diagonal with that huge pin. So after knight c4, black decided to play d5 as the lesser evil move, knight b6, and now we have knight g4, and it looks as though, hold on a sec, this really seems like a soft spot and a soft spot, and it looks as though you'd think, if you were looking at this and it was a human over the board game, and you didn't know the player's ratings, I'm not entirely sure. I mean, would you think black's got a very aggressive attack here? It looks a little bit scary. We have bishop takes g7, queen takes g7. Doesn't that facilitate queen h6 to combine on h2? But c5 has been left behind. The, the bridges have been burnt here, are they? After taking on c5, queen h6, white plays h3, and now knight takes f2 is played very dramatic indeed in this critical moment stockfish nn doesn't take the knight rook d takes d5 is played instead let's have a look at taking the knight perhaps f takes g check and then rook f8 this quiet move there's all sorts of threats here, like queen h4, for example. And it looks as though black should at least be able to get a perpetual check scenario like this. So that is pretty dangerous. Okay. A very dangerous scenario indeed. So, in fact, very calm... <laughs> Rook D takes D5. We have, so this exchange sacrifice, it basically opens up the so-called diagonal of death, or what I like to call the default diagonal of death. When the opponent has castled, their king's on G8 if you're playing white. This diagonal is often a reason for many games being won, tactically. So here, that diagonal has been opened up here, taking out that pawn. It was blunting the effect of the diagonal and making the bishop seemingly a bit pointless. But now, if, if d5 is taken out, the bishop potentially is using the c4 square. So taking out that, and also undermining the knight, uh, well, queen takes b4 is actually another story. The knight was there, but it looks as though it's very, very dangerous on the king side. So rook d takes d5. The knight takes, knight takes d5. 
f takes g3 and we have now queen b3 so already on the diagonal rook f8 we have knight b6 discover check king g7 and now queen b2 check the queen takes up the light the uh, dark square diagonal letting the bishop take over the light squares if needed queen f6 is necessary because of this if king g8 the bishop goes to c4 crisscross or rather complementary on the diagonal so here bishop takes rook f5 would be devastating this is absolutely devastating stuff for example like that might well, got, got a big advantage so uh the queen has to come off it seems as though there's no major attack now after the queen's come off and we have knight d7 forking the two rooks rook d8 knight takes f6 king takes knight c2 here why well, it has to be a bit careful if the pawn is pushed if b6 was played then knight d3 is actually strong forking c5 and e1 and if knight g2 knight takes and if knight takes d3 the pass pawn is strong for example like this with bishop f3 so yeah this is this is a bit dangerous if uh, b6 is played uh yeah it's, it's dangerous in all variations so knight c2 we have rook d2 here if uh knight d3 was played instead here then rook c3 95 knight d4 check this position is just going to be good for white there's no problem there white's got a big advantage so rook d2 was tried a6 h5 rook c8 bishop d5 knight b4 hitting the bishop bishop c4 and whilst it might be tempting that would leave a massive weakness of the last move neglecting h3 if that is taken so white plays rook c6 just to put that on the board if bishop takes then actually black would be winning here with this pass pawn and moving the rook here for anything to checkmate potentially eventually uh, so this is devastating that has to be avoided so rook c6 check instead of bishop takes c4 much stronger um just by the way in that line um the curious uh, fact about it is if rook b2 isn't played if queening white is still winning even here by the way white's position is just far too strong technically with the past pawns so it's still better even there okay so it needs precision anyway so rook c6 check we have king f7 bishop takes c4 check the bishop retreats back to protect h3 no worries g4 that's taken now to extinguish this worry no worries rook h6 against h3 the game ended here devastating black's attacking campaign totally ref refuted erased starting with that exchange sack for me this is the engine equivalent of a classic Tigran Petrosian versus uh, Boris Spassky game where Spassky in his early encounters with Tigran Petrosian un underestimated Petrosian's defensive capabilities the capability to sacrifice exchanges if needed to kind of make attacks backfire on his own king this is what happened here it seemed a major backfire leading to basically a winning position if the game continues here h3 then just taking and if check the king just scoops up g3 and walks to safety no problem so i'll take you to the uh, game end position i it shows this uh, stockfish nn has woken up in this tournament and since this win it's also won another and it's actually leading the tournament so check out tsec-chess.com for some of the most aggressive chess you'll ever see actually one of the games i really want to cover as well yeah is, is another stockfish nn game so really amazing games are being played check out those decisive games there by the way i've launched a new uh um course at udemy king's crusher tv slash opening tango i hope you can check that out especially i think you'll learn about dark square weakness provocation or weakness provocation in general this game certainly provoked black's attack and, and underlying weaknesses as pawns don't go backwards that's a key 
facts behind all of this. It's very, very difficult to calculate the longer term impacts of pawn moves, given that they can't go backwards. Uh, so yeah, I, I think, yeah, some great games. If you want to check out my chat at kingscrusher TV slash discord, invite me for a game at chessmall bitly slash chessmall five days of move. If you just register, I'll be able to invite you for a game later. Um, the playlist bitly slash Leela chess. There is one bitly slash stockfish chess as well. Check out. Okay. Comments, questions, like, share, subscribe with the notification bell. Always appreciated. Thanks very much.